So welcome everybody. Today I have again is one of is my special guest, Gabriel Rutin, MD from Holland. Raise your hand. Say hello. Hello, everybody. Okay. And our topic today has to do with the the emotional causes, the emotional solutions behind our skin problems. Our skin problems have all kinds of different names. There's eczema, and rashes of various kinds, and and so on. And we have been able to address those effectively as long as I've been around EFT, whether it's the tapping or the unseen therapists and so on. But like anything else, sometimes there are deeper things going on. And when it, and it quote, doesn't work and we're not getting our results and so on, we need to know the deeper things. And that's what we're here to talk about. So we have a a doctor with that kind of skill who's going to tell us all about it. <laughs> now, Gabrielle, you and I are co-authoring a book. It's about to be released in the Dutch language. And here we are in November of 2021. You think it's going to be released in the English language when? First half of 2022. All right. Somewhere in that, that would be that would be in English called um official eft from a to z and you've got a category with a's in it and b's in it and so on this is the s category for skin problems right indeed okay so let's start let's start this way um i have for years people will come to me and they will say well i've got this so-and-so skin problem whatever it is lots of different names as we as we said, and so I ask them questions. We oftentimes need to get down to cause. Sometimes we can aim at symptoms and you know, we get some magical stuff, but oftentimes you've got to get to, to cause. And so I'll ask them, you know, when did it start and a few things like that. And we get down to some emotional issues and off we go. You go a little deeper than that. So let me just sort of fade off and ask you a question or two as you start as you start talking about how to get into this even more, even more deeply if the results don't seem to budge with what we're doing. Yes. 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 I thought that would, would be a good idea because it's in the book, but to give people an um, idea and a little preview, so to speak, of how they can uh, uh, approach this, I thought it was inter it would be interesting to sort of line out how this is. So if you, if you don't have results, uh, immediate results or after time uh, doing EFT, you might need to dive a little deeper. And this is what I would like to explain because your skin is a huge organ and it reacts to different types of emotional issues or conflicts. And um, oftentimes when the skin is red and there's a rash or there's an allergic reaction, uh, so the skin show actually shows symptoms people will go oh i have a problem here i need what is this so i i would like to point out that if you are if the emotional cause of your skin problem is active so you're in the middle of an emotional situation your skin tends to not show many symptoms actually it it, it becomes a little thinner and sometimes there's a little numbness but nothing much shows because so in the skin. Well, just, so I, just so I understand that. If I am really angry about something, you know, somebody did something and I'm you know, all worked up. That wouldn't necessarily mean, oh, oh, oh here's, here's going to come my skin problem right now. Is that, is that what you're saying? Yes, because the skin shows three distinct types of emotional problems. Um, one is called separation conflict, which means because with your skin, you make contact. And so the type of situation that are, is causing you emotions that you need to look for is a separation conflict. But that means either having skin contact and, do, and don't, you don't want to have skin contact or you're, you want to have skin contact and you don't have it. So it's literally skin contact that we're talking about here. And that is called separation conflict. And when you say skin contact, it's not skin with a 
piece of wood or is it, it's a human contact, human skin contact. You're speaking it's both. Of. Oh, it it's is. Both. Okay, go ahead. It is both. So it's actual human contact, but it would it could also if you if you wear like really irritating clothing. Children might have a problem with like really irritating clothing or a diaper or something like that. That that could also be a separation conflict. Ah, okay. A skin con a skin contact con uh, conflict. And here's the thing: so these types of emotional problems show up in the upper layer of the skin, the epidermis. So the 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 skin layer you see on the outside. And so for people, if they want to dive deeper into, so what is causing this? You have to realize that while the separation conflict is really active, you don't have contact or somebody is constantly touching you or clothing is touching you or something harsh is touching you and you don't, you don't like that. The skin reacts by becoming a little numb, there's numbness, and also a little thinner and sometimes a little paler, but nothing too obvious. However, as soon as you resolve the conflict with EFT or because, for example, if somebody is touching you and you don't like that and that person goes away, goes out of, you know, goes out of your life, you resolve the conflict of skin contact that you do not want to have, then the skin reacts with a healing phase and shows up like a rash, redness, itching, eczema. So all these and allergy, uh, uh, allergic reactions, allergies, those types of reactions of the skin happen after the conflict has been resolved. So, so in that case, if, I, if I'm hearing you right, the conflict is now resolved. You've done EFT on it or whatever. And it is now resolved. So the rash is simply a healing, a sign of healing, rather than yes. being a problem we got to go do something with. Yes. Now, in a case like that, you know, one of the typical ways we address rashes is to put some kind of a cream on it. I'm guessing that, that would be a temporary solution while, it's, while that healing mechanism is going on. Yes or no? Yes. Yes. Yes, that's very temporary and it isn't really necessary unless you have like a really massive allergic reaction or whatever else. Um, that will heal itself, but not always, because the conflict that was ongoing might have just been um, resolved temporarily. So if skin rash comes back time, you know, it's a repetitive thing or if it doesn't go away, it means you really need to look at what are my separation issues. Who am I not, you know, who is touching me that I, and I don't want them to touch me or what am I missing? What contact am I missing? Yeah, well, and I want contact and not getting it. And and so you're, yeah. you're missing you're missing in that case. I'm trying to put myself, Gabriel, in the shoes of, of a listener here. Yeah. Okay, so I've got this rash. All right, there's emotional issues. Yes, okay. And so I've, I've tried EFT or unseen therapist and this kind of thing, and I've gotten some results, but uh, not quite. Oh, there's more to go, so we're now we're listening to you. So now, supposing they've resolved this with, let's say, unseen therapists. Mm -hmm. They've actually resolved it, but now we're into this I'm going to call it reaction phase where you're getting the rash anyway, as you're healing. Okay. How does the client know that's what's happening? Do they just wait it out and see if it continues, continues, continues or fades or how do they know? If it's a real healing phase, it won't show itself too long, two weeks max three weeks and then it should be gone if it's longer than that that means that there's one there's more than one separation conflict going on and you've resolved some of it but not all of it and that's that's the moment you need to really dive deep and all look right. at what are my separation conflicts who am i not I, touching who, why am i not touched by whom what do i miss and yeah. resolve the emotional problems your emotions around that specifically I, with unseen therapist. I was just talking with someone a couple of days ago um, 
and they were telling me that their mother loved them, okay. but didn't love them in a way that the client understood it well. Mother was saying, well, if I do things for you, that means I love you. The client was saying, no, no, you've got to touch me. Yeah. You, you've got to say I love you. Let's, we'll go to the touch for the moment. All right. So mother never hugged her. Mother never touched her. And yet she's longing for this. This is an example I'm hearing of separation anxiety. Mother isn't doing this. Yes. Okay. All right. Now we can, we can go into that and we can get down to specific events and we can do something with that. And that's what you're saying to do, but we got to identify what separation anxiety is first. So I just gave an example. Are there others you can give or? There's many. Anything that's got to do with with uh, you being touched or wanting to be touched uh, can do the same. So this is a very good example. But again, it could also be um, clothing, or if um, if you're e even if you're you're putting something on your skin, be that cosmetics or whatever else, and there's uh, there's emotions around that. That could also show up as a rash. This is. What, you know, in, in uh, allergic reactions, uh, that's oftentimes that plays a role. You're touched by something that subconsciously you have a problem with, an emotional problem with. And I, that will I'm show a, up as a rash as soon as you resolve it. I'm imagining a young child who has maybe been sexually abused touched if you will by an uncle or some adult or something like that in ways they okay and and maybe the texture of the person's skin um is whoa you know i don't ever want that kind of a touch so if they do have a romantic partner and are being touched if they see that or perceive that touch as being like the assailant whew, am i hearing separation anxiety or or not well so the, the 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 complicated thing is you have to realize that if you're touched by somebody else and it activates your old trauma, you're still act. It's an active trauma. Your skin yeah. will not show much. It's a little thinner and a little numb and maybe a little white. But as soon as you resolve the problem, I have an example. I worked with somebody who was abused as a child, and her mother did not believe her, but. There was a man in the house and the mother got into a fight with the man and sent the man uh, the man away without acknowledging that he was abusing her uh, child but he was her sending him away resolved the problem and then she was completely covered from from toe to head in a very severe uh, skin rash okay and right, then now. the mother didn't want to touch her so she 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 got the the next separation conflict that her it was that her mother didn't want to touch her anymore because she was covered in a skin rash. Okay, now this can get rather confusing. Again, we're talking about deeper things. A lot of times we'll just aim EFT at an emotional issue and unseen therapist and, and hooray. Okay, but we're talking about the ones that won't budge. So in that in that with the separation anxiety and the various forms that it can take. Most clients just don't have that sophistication, that understanding, all those details uh, at their fingertips. So something gets resolved. The abuser leaves in, in your example. Okay? And then they get this rash. They're likely to think oh, it's not done yet when in fact it is. So, it is. Yes. So, so, so what I'm trying to point out here is a practical matter is you got to wait, according to you two or three weeks to see what happens with that, with that rash, that skin issue. And it may go away forever. Hooray, hooray. If it comes yes. back not, and now you've got more separation anxiety to deal with. How separation conflicts. Yes. Co yes. Because okay. it's just, just as long as people understand that the, the rash that is identified as the problem starts when the conflict is resolved so you have to look at what was this conflict that got resolved if it happens again just look for anything that's got to do with being touched and touching skin skin yeah. to skin yeah. Yeah. If, you, if you look for those types of problems problematic situations you'll find them 
you'll find them. Yeah. Why do you? Uh, why am I uh, pointing out that you need to resolve them still if you haven't? Because you don't want a repetition. You don't want you know in the next phase again to have a rash all over the place or an allergic reaction or all that. So it's worth your while to look at what are my separation conflicts and resolve them with EFT so that the skin becomes, you know, nice and calm and w won't react anymore. All right. All right. All right. Good. W what else do you have? So that's the upper layer. So I'm going to make it a little more complicated if I may. Upper the dermis. Layer of, upper layer of skin. Uh, upper layer of skin. That, that's the, the skin you see. But underneath that, it's the dermis and conflicts that um, show up in the dermis are related to what we call defilement or attack conflicts. Defilement meaning either, you know, somebody, you know, yells at you dirty words. It could literally be vomit or something you experience is really nasty to get over you. But for example, a diagnosis, if a doctor throws over you nasty words about a diagnosis, that could be perceived as a attack conflict that might show up in the dermis. And an example of that is acne. Acne is a very clear example of um, you feeling defiled, there's defilement, dirty words, or you don't like the way you look. And um, any fungus uh, infection of the skin fungus on the feet or the nails or anywhere in the skin. The fungus infection uh, is related to these types of conflicts. Again, the moment it shows up, the conflict has been resolved. Either the trigger isn't there or you have used EFT. So, uh, But fungus uh, oftentimes is considered a very chronic thing, something that's really hard to get rid of. I'm, th I'm thinking of a case, Gabrielle. Mm -hmm. It's one of my more classic acne cases. And it was all done surrogately, by the way, on behalf of a young man in college who didn't want any part of all this. <laughs> His mother and I did this, did this surrogately with him. But he was having acne for years and was taking serious medication for it. The mother was concerned about the seriousness of the medication. But it was going on for years. Now, is this this isn't there because something got resolved and now he's got some acne as a result? It's something unresolved to begin with. Yes. It, the acne starts as a a defilement conflict, ugly words, for example. It is wow. resolved. Then the acne starts. But every time you look into the mirror you feel defiled because you see acne. So that's a, a typical example of a problem that, that keeps itself going because the symptom as such is considered a defilement. Okay, let me, and let that's me, why it's chronic. Let me complicate this a little bit with a practical example. This young man, okay. Now, as it turns out, what we learned from all of this, because we were asking unseen therapists for what's the real issue here and this kind of thing, um, that this young man had an unresolved conflict with his father, clear from childhood, his father would, would keep inappropriately giving him the message, do it my way or I won't love you. I'll break your toys, for example, if you don't do it my way. These are defilements that I'm hearing. They may not be nasty swear words or something like that, but, but I, I won't love you, I'm hearing is a defilement. Would I be right? Yes. As, as if, if the child s sort of um, experiences it as if somebody is just throwing it over them. Yeah. Yeah. As if it's touching them. If, he, if, he's, if he's throwing his, his words uh, uh, over them like that, that is defilement or attack. And that might very well show up as acne. So the first time the acne shows up, he's either not with his father and has, you know, a period where it, that doesn't happen, then the acne shows up because it's a reaction, it's a, a healing and repair reaction of the skin. However, then a new problem starts because 
you look in the mirror and you see all the pimples and then that is the defilement so acne is a is oftentimes quite chronic for for uh, for teens and young well, uh, uh, young uh, people what and what happened in this case is is once we once we got the idea that the defilement we weren't using that term but your term good term mm -hmm. um once we located this his my term response to his father's defilement of I won't love you and so on. Once we resolved that, and we did this whole thing surrogately, by the mm -hmm. way, his relationship with his father all of a sudden softened mm -hmm. and the acne just faded. No yes. longer needed any of the, um, you know, any of the medications. Um, and, and I don't know all the detail. I don't know whether he had a, follow on two or three weeks worth of more acne or rash or something. I, if we did, I didn't hear about it. But anyway, that's how that case went. So if I'm hearing it right, we resolve the defilement without even calling it that. Okay. Yes. Um, yeah. And magically, the whole thing went away. Well, yes, because um, if you use EFT to work on this emotional conflict of how the father you know, treats his son, so to speak, that relationship changes so that the son doesn't, you know, keeps on feeling defiled every time his father does that to him. Then the, the conflict resolves, the skin starts to clear, and then the defilement of looking in, this, in the mirror and thinking, oh, there are all these pip pimples again, that softens too. And yeah. then you s gradually, you know, sort of slip out of the whole conflict and then the skin clears. Okay. Great. Great. I'm trying to keep interrupting you, but, it, but I'm learning here. No, too, so, please. So, so, no, so please, carry, carry because, on. So, and the third one, I, so there's three. Yeah? So the third type of conflict that shows up in the skin is self esteem issues. And that, con that, um, targets the subcutaneous, um, connective tissue. If it's active, the subcutaneous connective tissue, it's a tongue breaker for me, um, becomes very thin and not as elastic. So wrinkly skin and loose skin um, is because this subcutaneous connective tissue becomes thinner and loses its uh, el uh, elasticity because you ha then you have an active self-esteem issue about how you look or you're, you're, you're getting older and all that. So that is a, is a process that sort of, you know, rolls out itself if it starts uh, like that. So an, um, an active self-esteem problem that shows up in the skin would be lipoma. And I think people will know that those are the little lumps of fatty tissue you have like little round lumps either in your face or on your back or wherever they can show up anywhere. That is um, self-esteem issue that shows up in the skin. Do you yeah, know lipoma? Uh, the little, they're well, quite soft. Yeah, little... you, you're describing it. You, recall, I'm not a doctor, so I, I'm, I'm, I'm sitting here nodding oh, yeah. my head saying, yes, Gabrielle, yes, Gabrielle. <laughs> 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 but I, I wanted to ask you something about this. When you come to self-esteem issues, mm -hmm. just about every has a, everyone has a self-esteem issue of some kind. Our culture gives it to us. You, sh you must achieve, for example, and we don't necessarily achieve the way our culture or society thinks we should, or our parents think we should, or our teachers think we should, or, I mean, we got shoulds all over us, uh, mm. you know, and hence, to some degree, self-esteem issues now some shrug it off and it's a minor self-esteem issue others take it on big time okay and i don't always see a rash connected to a self-esteem issue no come on that could you rashes would show up with separation conflict self-esteem just if the skin is involved if your if your self-esteem problem involves your skin or how, your appearance, then it might show up as a little lipoma or a big one. Uh -huh. So if you, so you, 
what I always say is work back from the symptom. So if the, if the symptom shows itself as a little lipoma or a big one, then with this information, you know, you have to look at self-esteem issues regarding how you look, your appearance, your skin or anything. Okay. So the, 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 the um, physical symptoms are pointers. I always work, I, I work back from the symptoms. So if you have a rash, it's a separation conflict. If you have acne, it's a defilement conflict. And if you have a lipoma or cellulite, for example, that's also uh, the third type. So it's the self-esteem issue. So that's how I would use it. Look okay. at the symptom. All right. And that points to the, the type of conflict you need to look for. Okay. Now, I'm still trying to put myself in the shoes of, of listeners here who aren't really yeah. used to all these medical terms and different layers of the skin and so on. So this is the kind of thing that to me is very helpful if what you're doing with unseen therapists, even the tapping or whatever you're using is temporary, partial, not giving you everything you would like. Chances are, ah, now there's these more detailed things. You may want to go over this, this uh, video a few times you know, so you really get what's going on here. At least that's, that's, that's how I would, yes. I would say, I'm not sure once through all this for the non doctor is going to have everything land. It's all there. I think, I think we did a good job. You did a good job on all of that. Anyway, anything more you want to talk about? No, I mean, I understand it's a bit confusing. And um, so Hopefully the English translation is available soon because it's in the chapter and then you can just sit down and read about it. There's a little, there are more examples there, but uh, I wanted to keep it uh, as simple as possible. Um, but just play around with it. Now you know there's three types of emotional conflicts that show up in the skin. So Yes, yeah, yeah. Okay. Fabulous, Gabriel. Anything more you want to say before we... Before we sign off? I think it's good like this. Yeah. Okay. Well, here comes my hug. Clear from California. Over there to your part of I'm Europe. I'm back from Sweden. Europe. <laughs> Europe. Okay. All right. Okay. Um, uh, with that in mind, I thank you all for listening in. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, see you next time.